is very important. Though I am a software engineer before and now canonist, but I like history because without knowing the history, we don't know anything. So it will be a little boring if you don't pay attention. But if you pay attention, it will be very interesting. So let me take back. So we in India, we have three rights. And we discussed about the Latin rite already. And Siro Malabar, you are very familiar what is the situation in India. Just, just going through. And Malankara, we have 11 dioceses. And total faithful around 5 lakhs, more or less. So this is about a brief details about this thing. And about our history, you all know that St. Thomas. Apostle came 52 and died 72 and uh, Saint Bartholomew one among the 12 Apostle also he came to India and he died some he preached somewhere near Kalyan which means like a Bombay area then another missionary important for the history of Christianity in India is the Thomas of uh, Kanai around in the 4th century so that is the traditions which we have in India. Then in the 13th century, we have missionary, uh, Italian missionary who comes and in 1329, the first diocese in India was erected. That is the Koilon diocese. Anybody is there? Somebody smiling? Oh, get up, get up, get up. It is a proud. Just, just get up all the column people. Yes, yes. Get up. <laughs> yeah, so you are coming from a history. So when we relate, when we able to relate, yeah, that is the first diocese in India. Though we say that, uh, uh, though we say that uh, Thomas came, St. Thomas, but officially as a diocese, for 1200 years, let us say 1300 years, Christianity was there, but only in 1329, first diocese was erected by Holy Father Pope John Paul, John 22nd, first diocese. And if you want to know more details, just visit the Koilon Diocese website. In the front page only, beautiful narration is given. So at least for the sake of your friends, you visit. It's, it's really, and with that, the whole church history is connected. We, we, are, we will be going through that, in that. Then after that, Vasco de Gama, you know, in the 15th century, Vasco de Gama comes and money, uh, Dutch and Portuguese people comes. And because of this Portuguese domination in the coastal area, uh, we have this uh, Padruado. Padruado means uh, Holy See. Holy Father has a informal and formal uh, agreements with the Portuguese king in the 15th century. And he said, you are going and conquering the new lands. Wherever you go, you preach the gospel. You take some priests also with you and baptize them and continue the mission. And because as a Pope I am here, I cannot. So I am giving you the authority. You can appoint the bishops. You can ordain priests. If needed, you can create the diocese. So that is called Padrovado. It is actually Italian word. Padrovado means patronage. So Holy Father during that centuries has given to the Portuguese kings this royal agreement. So because of that in the 15th century, in the mid 15th, 16th century we have the Goa, Goa diocese and that's why from 15th century onwards so many missionaries started coming and one among them is Francis Xavier whom we know very famous. And he worked in Kollam, in, in Koilan. Then only he moved to Goa and other places. Long time he was there in Kollam also. So let us go. Then, when the missionaries are coming from outside, surely Indian 
Christianity is still continuing parts of uh, Kerala who claim or who are acclaimed as St. Thomas Christians and uh, there is a uh, um, they are following the Chaldean rite and slowly after two centuries 1609 around 220 years only seat of Angamali was created for the to cater with the St. Thomas Christians it is too early to say the word Siro Malabar Thomas Christians then naturally there was some misunderstanding not able to understand the language culture tradition and Goa Archbishop now we have Cardinal Philip Neri Ferrao do you know uh, we have major archbishops right Cardinals two major archbishops we have right any patriarch we have in India we are. So Goa Bishop traditionally has this title Patriarch of the East Indies. So when during the Padruvado, Goa Bishop has whole East Indies, India and neighboring countries going till Singapore and further. So Goa Bishop can decide. And still the title the Bishop of Goa continues Patriarch of East Indies. India. Okay, so during the uh, 16th century, at the uh, beginning of 17th century, we have this uh, synod, and uh, during that synod, there was some tussle between the traditional group and uh, new alliance. And uh, after the synod, Pope has appointed one bishop to take care of the Thomas Christians. But let us see, uh, in the 1610, this bishop has limited the jurisdiction of St. Thomas Christians. So it is written here, north of Malabar to south, which means practically Kerala, because that time the word Kerala is not there. Because uh, different, different kingdoms, Travancore, different, different things. So to add, uh, to, to make sure from down to top that is the jurisdiction for St. Thomas Christians and only that was lifted in 2017 by uh, erection of the Shamshabad diocese so that Siro Malabar also have the jurisdiction throughout India. So in uh, after Synod of Dimer, Diper, Diper we have this uh, two new alliance or old alliance, Potenkor and Parinkor. So, this old Pariyakor, uh, I am from Andhra Pradesh, I can read little Malayalam but maybe sometimes pronunciation will be difficult. So these uh, people were obedient and they stayed back with the Pope. And other group, they went and they joined the Antiochian uh, rite, Syro Orthodox, and that's how we have this Malankara tradition evolved in uh, Indian Church. And within the Malankara Church, people who left after that uh, Conan Kurish uh, episode, within the Malankara, there were so many divisions. All these names, Syrian Church, Jacobite, Malankara Orthodox, Malankara Marthomite, all but all these Malankara tradition they follow West Syriac. We have this East Syriac, West Syriac. It is very simple. Like when you see the map, Iraq map, what is left side and what is right side. That's as simple as it is. But uh, language and uh, a lot of uh, symbolism differ. So that is the only thing and Malankara uses the West Syriac and the Chaldean church that right uh, Chaldean tradition uses the East Syriac. Then in uh, 1659 
vicariate or the apostolic vicariate of Malabar, now the present Verapoli Archdiocese. That was formed and all the Thomas Christians again were put under the administrator of this uh, uh, Malabar Apostolic Vicar. Then uh, in the 16th century, the see which was created for Angamali for Thomas Christians were suppressed and they were put under the Verapoli. And that's how this word before coming Verapoli, it is uh, Apostolic Vicariate of Malabar. Then the people who follow the Syrian liturgy, they started calling Syro Malabar within the jurisdiction. Then in uh, 1886, officially Indian hierarchy was established, erected. Few dioceses, few provinces and a few uh, prefectures with different in view of making diocese in the future. So again here I highlighted Koilon. What happened again? Why Koilon comes here? First 13th century we have the diocese. That first bishop was there. He dies. After that one papal legate comes. 16 months he serves. He dies. Then there was a dark age. There was no bishop. Then slowly these diocese attached to the Padruvado under Goa. Then slowly, slowly Goa established Cochin. Cochin diocese. Cochin diocese, uh, if, you, if you see the history of uh, St. Devasahayam, uh, he is under Cochin diocese, the territory. And even if you go and see the Singapore Arch, uh, Archdiocese website, Singapore was under Cochin diocese in the 17th century. So, so huge it is. Then in the 18th century, the end of the 19th, like the beginning of the 19th century, Pope Leo XIII established the Indian hierarchy, removing the, uh, uh, removing the authority of Padruvado, Portuguese, because initially Portuguese domination was there, but later, uh, 18th, 17th century, we have British. So, naturally, there is another fight. So, naturally, Pope has revoked and he established directly from the hierarchy nominations from. And that's how these dioceses came in 86. And in 87, again, new dioceses were erected. And in 87, officially, Siro Malabar Church was formed and permission was given by Pope Leo XIII. In 92, 30 years back only, Siro Malabar Church has become the major archiepiscopal church with the synod and all these faculties, Su Yuri's church we say. And uh, in 1916, Archbishop Eugene Bissosa, Archbishop, uh, he is Archbishop of Bhopal, but before that, he is the Bishop of Nagpur. First indigenous bishop, means like an Indian bishop. Before that, nine bishops were there in Nagpur. All are French missionaries, MSFS. So he is the first one, Indian bishop, participated in the Second Vatican II and all. Then he was made, when he was made Archbishop of Bhopal, he invited the Siro Malabar missionaries, CMI congregation, Christ University you have, right? So that fathers. So they started going in different parts of North India and slowly, slowly, uh, eventually few dioceses erected apart from. And all the Latin faithful were under the jurisdiction of the Siro Malabar bishops from last, uh, uh, let us say, um, 40, 40 odd years. Then slowly other dioceses also evolved. In the previous slide you see, though 9 it is written, only 6 names are here because other dioceses 
In 87, Pope John Paul II gave the permission to erect a diocese in, Go, uh, in Bombay region, Kalyan diocese, for Siro Malabar faithful. Then uh, five years back in 2017, we have the new diocese, Eparchy, in uh, Oriental tradition, diocese is called as Eparchy to identify easily. And with that, Shemshabar, the whole India, Siro Malabar also have the jurisdiction, which means Siro Malabar can start the churches. Then this is about the brief about the Malabar. And let us go to the Malankara. On 28th September 1913, again at Koilong. Few people who has gone in the 15th century with that two groups divided. One remained with the Catholics, then slowly they became Siro Malabar Church. But others they went and joined the Antiochian tradition started calling themselves Malankara, Malankara Orthodox, Malankara Jacobite, Marthomite, so, so, so names. One group, they wanted to reunite and 1930, uh, Koilon Bishop facilitated and they were received to the Catholic Church and they want to preserve their tradition, West Syriac tradition, Antiochian tradition and that's how Syro Malankara Church was established and in 2005 only it has elevated as a major archiepiscopal church then 2015 Malankara church also got the jurisdiction all over India so we find a few dioceses outside Kerala also for Mal Malankara also so this is the complex reality of India uh, when we say Catholic, it's a universal. So it's not like a universal does not need to be uniformity. So when you are different, that also is a beauty. So in 2017, Pope Francis wrote a letter to all the uh, bishops and faithful. And uh, CCBI also clarified there is no permission required from any competent authority to administer sacraments to uh, oriental faithful who are frequenting the Latin churches. In the canon law also, I think 844, um, uh, Sacro Communis, it says like if there are different, different uh, situation where sacraments can be administered by the Latin uh, clergy, cleric to the oriental catholic. So I'll just uh, wrap it up. This is just a small history about three churches, Latin, Siro Malabar and Siro Malankara and how we function. Each diocese, you know, you are coming from diocese, you have bishop, Korea is there, administration is there, but in the national level. So in the national level, in 1944, around 80 years, almost 8 years back this is CBCA is established erected when we say 1944 this is before the present canon law we have and before Vatican also but of course we have a code of canon law 1917 PO Bandit 10 code still it is there and according to the norms of 1917 code of canon law this conference for all the bishops including Malabar and Malankara this was established and it was a conference when I say it was but at present it is not but we use still that title why I uh, will come back to that so total including Latin Malabar Malankara retired and active bishops we have around 250 bishops in India and uh, recently uh, even uh, many times CBCA wanted to uh, change the name of CBCA to assembly like ACBI assembly of catholic bishops of India 
but because of different reasons because it's already established as a legal entity in the government and uh, uh, there is a license between the government offices and when there is a national level uh, thing to license with the government uh, one body so that's how still that name still remains but canonically uh, cbca is not a conference it's a assembly it's a assembly of bishops coming together and uh, uh, cbca statutes second article itself says cbca is not to be understood as conferencia episcoporum as described in the canons 447 and continues but it is just a assembly maybe in future the name might change to acpi also but at present still that name is going on and uh, cbca is not a conference but is a assembly or we can also call as a federation of churches we say the latin word su iuris which means like a who has autonomy or like a have a right uh, right to uh, to function as a independent church and uh, cbca does not have any commissions before it has but now it doesn't have any commission because commission is a canonical word and only ccba has the commissions of course other su iuris churches siro malabar malankara also have commissions parallel commissions but not the cbci this division from cbca to ccba it came because as the su iuris churches progress through major episcopal arch episcopal churches and they got the full freedom to have the synod naturally uh, latin bishops forced to make ccbi latin bishops conference in india and uh, ccbi which is conference of catholic bishops of india established in 1988 and initially ccbi when it is formed there is also latin rite ccba hyphen latin rite but in 1994 when the statutes of ccba was approved by the holy see vatican asked to remove that latin rite because the whole church follows the roman rite only other 22 groups oriental churches which rome consider as small churches when you see the global scenario so those churches only identified with a particular name but uh, you don't need to put a latin rite so that's how that word latin rite is dropped and still some people argue in the facebook sometimes something is posted they say like you have to identify yourself as latin rite anyway so that is the thing but initially that latin rite word also is there but holy see only asked to remove and that's how this ccbi started functioning and uh, 1983 we have the revised code after second vatican ii and in 1990 we have the oriental uh, canon law code was promulgated and following that siro malabar got the uh, full major archiepiscopal status following malankara also and from then onwards they have active synods which means like synod can decide many things even erection of the dioceses proposing the candidates for bishopric so many things then uh, coming to ccbi it is established in 1988 then 94 statutes were revised and approved and it's the only national episcopal conference for the latin rite it has 16 commissions and four apostolates and six departments total and uh, i'll just quickly go through the ccbi commissions what are the commissions um boundary commission 
which means though CCVI has different different like a there is a big diocese and the bishop thinks now it should be divided into another diocese that proposal will come to the CCBI and CCBI is competent to give yes or no suggestions then only application will be forwarded to the Rome Bible if any translation whatever language Indian languages if you make anybody any regional episcopal uh, council they change they should get the nulla osta no objection approval letter from the CCBI so it has like that then canon law in canon law there are so many places where the law leaves to the episcopal conferences to decide for example uh, appointment of parish priests how many years it will be so court says he should appoint indefinite time that is one way of saying but definite time also episcopal conferences can fix so then episcopal conference has to decide then okay we come episcopal corners in india complementary legislation it says like five six years and and indian certain things uh, complementary legislation were relaxed more also you know father Ranjit, right and of course like from this institute we have so many people uh, who are the secretaries for the canon law commission also which means like uh, where the code relaxes for the episcopal conferences to decide ccbi will take it and it will be voted by the bishops and then it will be sent to rome and then uh, officially complementary laws will be promulgated and so on so there, there are different different uh, uh, commissions each commissions works in the national uh, level and all i'm just uh, just you can just have a look liturgy migrants proclamation scc's theology doctrine vscr which means vocations seminaries clergy and religious maybe hopefully father uh, charles leon will come once in the future to address all the seminaries uh, vocation related priests religious uh, includes in one commission arms cdpi and all other things though, though they are departments but they are connected with the vrv vscr women youth uh, different things and communio is one of the department we'll just get into that and ccba also coordinates with different movements which are approved movements for example ucat ucat is a international foundation in india it works through ccbi and some depending on the need of the time for example now synod last two years it is going another two years it will go so it, the department ccbi establishes and in the ccbi we have three things office bearers who are elected by all the bishops and one will be president vice president and secretary general and the deputy secretary general will be appointed executive committee when you say executive committee all the archbishops metropolitan bishops all the archbishops including the chairman bishops this is 16 commissions we each commission will be one chairman sometimes if archbishop is there one number will reduce so if not if 23 archbishops are there all chairman bishops are bishops then that 16 also will add to the executive committee and this executive committee uh, uh, for the governing things it will take decision but important things where voting is required plenary assembly plenary assembly will vote and finalize certain uh, certain uh, matters and ccba links church in india with the roman Curia, all the dicasteries of vatican and also ccba is in relation with fabc federation of asian bishops conferences different different conferences that's a federation which means like a cbca is also almost like that it's not a conference it's a federation 
assembly where other conferences coming together ccpa connects with 14 regional bishops councils this terminology you need to be very careful councils in the regional level national level conference and uh, uh, in the previous slide i said executive committee and plenary assembly the parallel names for the cbca standing committee is little similar to the executive committee where in the cbci standing committee all the archbishops and the chairmen bishops will be there and for the plenary assembly cbca uses general body because plenary and executive these are canonical terms only official canon canonical conferences can use this terminology ccba connects with all 132 latin dioceses and also 674 provincials or religious congregations which are uh, affiliated or in the latin right these are the, some of the dicasteries dicastery for evangelization maybe i think uh, vatican also changed that word because before recently only this word dicastery came before that it is a congregation maybe this problem is there international level when you say congregation for the clergy, uh, okay, which is a religious congregation, people are finding out. So that's why now the Vatican Roman Curia offices are called as a dicasteries. Before they are called as a congregation for the clergy, congregation for the religious, like that. And all this communication from Vatican, from Pope, from Holy See, through these dicasteries comes to CCBI. Naturally, Vatican Roman Curia will contact the Suiurist churches also, which are oriented, and from there it will information will disseminate to the oriental faith. But the, but the, for the Latin, it comes to the CCBA, and this is the channel. And CCBA selects and sends the delegates for the international meetings, but CBCA cannot send. It's just like a consultative body only. As already said, complementary legislation and the decrees in the national level, which are not even incorporated in canon law. For example, like uh, previously there was a discussion, like uh, if a person, if a boy is from one diocese, it is going to another diocese, how to process, the, how the papers will go through the courier. Much more than like if a person is from another country, how, how, how it should work. Like this, all these uh, which are not foreseen in the canon law, all those laws will be uh, decreed by the uh, Latin Conference of India, which is CCBI. And uh, some of the competences, naturally CCBI doesn't have the uh, competence to appoint the bishops, that is solely reserved to the Holy See. But for the bifurcation, as I already said, the boundary commission. If any changes on the boundaries, it will come to the CCBI. And even raising a diocese to an archdiocese, that also will happen through CCBI. And any church to be raised as a basilica or national shrine, that also competence is with the CCBI. And only with the resolution in the CCBI, application will be forwarded to the Holy See, or else it will not be accepted. And CCBA is responsible for the magisterium and to keep the code of uh, law and also word of God, as I said, like a imprimatur, translations, and also disciplinary inquiry matters. Any problem on priests, bishops, CCBA has the competence. Here I wrote only about the priests and bishops, even the religious congregations. For example, there is a big problem in a religious congregation. They are not able to find a leader. Uh, then Vatican will depute CCBA to settle the issue. And CCBA can, uh, if it comes through a process, uh, office bearers will appoint one apostolic visitator and to appoint the general or provincial to the religious congregation also. So when there is a problem, 
CCV comes. When everything is okay, no problem. Something to change new, CCVA comes into the picture. CCVA mission and identity, it's ecclesial and canonical. But still, uh, this confusion is there because these words are very similar, CBCI and CCBI. CCBI is only 34 years. It's and uh, CBCI is uh, almost 80 years. So naturally people are still tuned with the uh, though it has changed almost 30 years, 34 years past, still people are thinking in the uh, CBCA level. It will take time and uh, only people like you can change that information. So when you know, when you become priest, when you go to the parishes, you people can explain what is the difference between this uh, CCBI and CBCI. And in the CBCA, as I already said, these canonical terms, uh, commissions cannot be used. CBCA calls it as offices, offices for evangelization, office for education, office for proclamation, like that. Because that's a canonical terms. And uh, CCBA has purposely left some commissions not to establish, because uh, already there is a office established, well established. Uh, for example, like a youth, uh, agreement between the CBC and CCBA not to, because there was a lot of uh, discussion and uh, certain commissions, all the bishops agreed to have in the national level. For example, youth. So youth commission, the agreement is like that. Youth Commission Chairman will be appointed by Latin Bishops. Secretary also will be appointed by Latin Bishops. And automatically, he will be the Chairman and that person will be Secretary for the Council, National Council of CBCA also. So parallel arrangement with the uh, Women's Commission and uh, Lady Commission also, it is happening. And for the C CCBI, we have seven secretariats. One is in, actually two are in Bangalore. The main office is in Bangalore, uh, close to Banaswadi, NBCLC, if some people have reached to NBCLC. So where Deputy Secretary General stays. So that's why it is still uh, called main office. If in future Deputy Secretary General moves to Delhi, maybe that will be the main office because before first office for the CCBA was established in Delhi then uh, 15 years back only the Deputy Secretary General moved to Bangalore that's why this become the main office uh, main secretary and likewise we have other seven uh, three in Delhi and uh, one in Goa and one in Bhopal, Pashmari, in Madhya Pradesh so this is the website, if you want to know more details about CCBI, you can watch that. Then uh, actually few days back, I asked the father, can we get, can I get an appointment to uh, speak about communion. Uh, then father requests, anyway you are coming, please tell some brief history about the CCBI and then slowly. But my intention to come uh, to say is about the communion. So, without, uh, I have spoken enough, so I will show you a video. Hands in prayer, minds in mission, and hands in solidarity. This is the vision of communion. 